computer. Perfect. Hey, welcome. This is another episode of Let's Talk 2500 MZBC. And I have Minister LeVan Pipes with me today. And we are going to, <laughs> you all, you you know, he got nicknames. I, I affectionately call him Curtis, but Minister LeVan <laughs> Pipes, <laughs> um, an associate minister at Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in Zion, Illinois. And today we're going to talk about, you know, not so much church after the pandemic, but just technology in church. That's something that me and uh, LeVan work together on at our church. And um, I think we need some education around it and a discussion to help some people kind of better understand its place. And it will transition into a topic called, that I affectionately call change the atmosphere. And so Ooh. we'll get into that. So dude, how you doing? It's been a while since you and I have chatted. So how are you? What you up to? I'm absolutely wonderful. Enjoying this beautiful fall-like weather we got in the spring. <laughs> indeed, right? Indeed, indeed. So, so let's jump right in. You know, church after the pandemic with technology. You yes. know, um, a lot of churches had some issues with transitioning and and kind of felt like technology what needed. You know, we don't need all that. So, give me your feedback. Give us some input. What? How do? How are you um, seeing this? Um, I, I saw almost prophetically where we were heading before the pandemic hit, because the world itself is becoming more technologically uh, involved in everything. I mean, everything from corporations and uh, churches, mega churches, but it's always the smaller churches that are the last to catch on. So when the pandemic hit, it was a blessing in disguise because it got, allowed us to, uh, one, shift. We had to shift. We couldn't be in the building anymore, you know, and those who did stay in the building, like I was part of the first wave that stayed in the buildings and the people were talking about God is going to protect us. And then by the end of that service, about 80 of us had uh, COVID. So it forced us to change. And, um, but it also opened up a brand new uh, arena for us to operate in because before you had to have millions of dollars in order to reach the same audience as T.D. Jakes and Joyce Myers. Now, social media gave us all the same platform for the right. same amount, nothing. Right. Uh, but it, it, even today, it's still some resistance from those who don't understand technology and how it works. So that's where you and I work <laughs> and try to educate. <laughs> to but how, how do we get them? How do we get them to, you know, because technology has its pros and its cons. And most ministers or pastors or even just congregation from the teens even down to maybe some kids to some seniors they have smartphones they have tablets they got smart tvs they got all this technology but then when it came to the church they couldn't yeah i i and i still struggle with trying to explain that it's it's all for the good and it does not take you know john 316 don't turn into john 316 b <laughs> it's still right. 316 but technology helps you to reach uh i don't even say a, a, a different geographic geographical location but different different area of people culture of people so explain that tell me how you how you shared it to get people to understand uh, i usually show them like i i do a lot of consulting for a lot of churches from wisconsin all the way through uh -huh. uh, here and honestly i can say uh, without with the fear sounding out racist, it's mostly the black churches that have the problem because the white churches will grab a hold of technology and run with it because once they see the application, it, it changes everything. So what I do is I try to show them where technology mm -hmm. does not have to take away from Saturday, from Sunday morning, but it could actually enhance Sunday morning if it's used right. And I show them how not only are you able to reach people that are in your area, but you're able to reach people outside of your area? And I have documented churches uh, where churches from just right here locally are reaching the Philippines on a weekly basis, are reaching in China. People are tuning in from around the world to watch these local guys who have no big name. And also it improves their tithe. It improves their offering amounts as well as mm -hmm. it uh, it creates now what I call a date 
For instance, in times past, you had to get up on Sunday morning, get dressed, get in your car, and drive to a church that you've never been to, only to sit there for five minutes and notice that that church is not for you. Now, I can sit in my living room and watch the service and know beforehand if it's going to be a good fit for me or not. And I have the to waste my time. Yes, I call it date, church date now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a pre-screening. But but I think I think and and again, those who are watching, no disrespect, right? But the old schoolers felt it would take away from the fellowship. You know, mm-hmm. because okay, let's let's agree cuz I I'm in total agreement with it and this is how I feel that isolation is not good at all for nobody, right? right. And just staying at home and watching uh, church on the TV is not healthy mentally, spiritually, or physically. So you need to be part of a church home. I want to make sure I put it out there, a church family that loves you, that you're comfortable with, and that you can go be a part of the fellowship. But technology and, and on social media does not take away from your study time. Like you said, you know, you still have to study technology. Don't make the choir better <laughs> or the sermon better or the fellowship better you still there's still a discipline and a study and a christian walk you have to do it's just technology helps us to reach out like you stated it, it helps us to to get the gospel and that's i appreciate and have learned since the pandemic it has made us get outside the walls of our four church our churches because sometimes we was like a members only club right I'm a member of, I'm a member of, and then we come to this place and and we, we build up, we encourage. And then when we leave, we're not doing nothing. And I I will admit to some degree, I was guilty as well. We're not doing nothing with the gospel message, with the praise to exemplify and share Christ. And so it's like when the disciples was in Jerusalem and the, the, the gospel had to go out, Christ set it up where you got to leave here. And you can't stay here. So um, budget, let's look at budget, technology, budget, you know, because that's that's the big wow factor when they see. Let me quickly when, back off what this said. Okay. Um, when it comes to um, your Sunday morning service, here's the thing that you most people have to understand is that those who are going to come to church are going to come to church. Right. Those who stay home right. are going to stay home. Because before the pandemic, uh, church attendance was down. Mm-hmm. Living in the Midwest, a little snow or a little rain will stop a whole lot of people from coming to right, church. Right. However, technology provides us with uh, a way to reach people, the unchurched, those who are unsaved. It, 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 you'd be surprised how many people uh, stop. I talk to people in the store. Hey, man, I was watching you on, on Facebook, man. It's like the thuggest dude in the world. And I'm like, oh, well, bless you. Uh, also, yeah, yeah. sick and shut in, we're not able, they're not able to get to us on Sunday morning. So therefore, they're missing church every day that they're not in the building because they can't make it to the building. Our sick right now can't make it to the building. So now we can bring church to their living room or to their hand or to the hospital room, wherever they are. And then finally, I, I try to tell people, If you want, you have to strategize like with anything else. Yeah. So if I don't want you to miss Sunday morning, then what I show on the internet is not going to be what's happening Sunday morning. That's going to be what happened last Sunday. If you want to know what's happening this Sunday, you're going to have to come in this Sunday. For instance, Sunday is Father's Day. Mm -hmm. Tuning in, expecting, and strategically to hear Father's Day message on Father's Day, you're not going to hear it. you got to be in the building to hear the Father's Day message. You'll hear the Father's Day message the week the after. The following week, yep. So now it creates a need for you to be there in real time to hear and see what's going on. Or when things are going, one week I tuned in and we were having high praise in the church. Well, that right there lets you know that if you want to experience this, you need to be here. Some things can't be translated online. They have to be in person. We don't have to forsake some of ourselves together, but at the same time, do not forsake the technology that God has given us to reach the entire world. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Don't forsake the technology. And, and the key is it, it has its pros. That's what I try to tell people. Because I always say, you know, you have a smartphone. How does it benefit you? So now right. let's just take that to the church. How, how will it benefit? You know, I remember 
grandma, you know, before she passed, uh, she had one good eye <laughs> and <laughs> giant print. What in giant print no more. I don't care how big you make it in the, in the leather bound Bible, you know, mm -hmm. it's not giant print. And so every Sunday when she would show up, she would carry her Bible, but she couldn't follow along. And so when you introduce that technology of, of screens and all of that, it allows people who may not know where Micah is right. <laughs> to participate in the worship, right? Because everybody that comes to church don't know the books of the Bible. And so they need to also see the scripture for themselves and understand or follow along. So it's, it's, boy, it's, it's a challenge. And what I, what I struggle with is people got, people have $900 plus phones and tablets and, yeah, yes. <laughs> and they using it every day. But when it came yeah. to the church, they just could not transition their mind to say, like it was going to take away from the fullness and the, I like the word you use experience of, mm -hmm. of the fellowship of the praise and of the worship. And, and I just want to emphasize that to those watching, it does not take that away. What it does is it allows you to see it and experience it. And I like how you stated minister pipes that for the sick and shut in, you know, people taking care of the sick and shut in. We mm -hmm. have, uh, a young lady at our church who was out for because of uh, birth of a new child and was able to still be engaged or participate or see what was happening in the worship service. So uh, let's transition because cost, because that's, you know, you could try to tell them all the benefits of it, but when you give them that ching, -ching that dollar amount, <laughs> that, that makes a world of a difference. <laughs> it really ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you have to. So, so what's at, cost? Let me know. What talk? There are different tiers, different levels of cost. Yeah. But it's all an investment. Okay. So statistically, mm -hmm. and everything I'd say you can look up, statistically, your churches don't grow by 50, 60 years old. Your churches don't grow. They grow small in increments by, you know, maybe five to seven year old. Your demographic that makes your church grow is 15 to 35 years old. Ironically, this is your technological generation. This is the generation that is um, uh, very tech savvy. Mm -hmm. So if you want to reach, you can reach them, but you got to meet them where they are because uh, they're not going to just come walking into your church. I don't care about what location you're in. That demographic is not just going to come walking into the door. So you have to look at it in terms of investment, not only just investment, in uh, technology and making your church better, but the same way that you would invest in outreach. Back in the day, we used to have pamphlets. You used to have, you know, the, even the, the, the letters you put on the sign in the front of the church, that sign was all a part of the same outreach. Anything, yep. the correspondence you send out, whether it be email, you have to pay for the computer, you have to pay for uh, the servers, all that thing, just to get your correspondence out. So why not look at this as being the same thing? It's an investment. Now, there are three tiers. There's what I call the professional or the elite tier. This is where you have um, things like uh, pro presenter and you invest in very expensive cameras. But, and I know a lot of times people shy away from very expensive cameras and things like that. But if you see the difference between a, a regular camera or a cell phone camera and a professional camera, you'll never go back Dude. to being a It'd be the same dude. as driving. I've seen some videos, car. dude. I've seen some videos <laughs> on Facebook, and it's like you can't even make out what's going on, and it's just like it don't even grab your attention. It's like the it's the quality. That's what they fail to understand the quality, right. and you pay for that. But it's some um, it's some churches where I turn it off. It's just like I can't hear it. I can't make out what's going on. The, the camera skipping, the internet signal is bad. It's just like, come on, come on. And the, the, I go back and I don't mean to interrupt you, but I go back. Most of these pastors, preachers, leaders, deacons, you know, even in our church have devices and have the quality in their hand of how they experience their day-to-day -day 
Mm-hmm. When they come to the church, it's just like, oh, wait. <laughs> you got an the- iPhone, you paid at least $1,200. But when it comes to the church, oh, wait, we can't afford that. Really? Often, it reminds me of when uh, God had to reprimand Israel when Israel was building their houses and leaving God's house in shambles. He said, hey, I don't have a problem with you building your house, but That's you right. have got to take care of my house. That's you put right. all the gold and the best stuff in your house, and then That's when it comes right. to my house, you're giving me what's left over. That's right. We take that same attitude with church where we have the best technology, we have the best cars, we have the best whatever we need, we have the best TVs in our house, but when it comes to church, we try to find a reason not to have it, or we yep. don't need or we don't want that. And oftentimes, I circle back around to them, well, if the church doesn't need it, then why do you need that brand new phone? Couldn't you have made phone calls and texts with that old phone you had? Why did you That's upgrade right. it? That's right. Because it's the best and if you want the best for yourself then you ought to want the best for god come on now come on that's just so, how i feel about it and people at i love them but they think i just want to spend money spend money spend money but i'm asking god the best for me and then i want to give him and i like yo you went straight bible you know when god had to get on them look you didn't came back i'm bringing you back home i need mm-hmm. my temple taken care of first you can take care of your house. I want you to have the best. And the key is God provided for them to have the best. <laughs> but oftentimes we don't see that when it comes to church because it's a resistance that is steeped in fear of losing what we have instead of adding on to what we already have. I agree. So if, I, if I have something, I don't have to. It's like building an addition into a house. I'm not losing the second floor, the first floor to build a second floor. I'm just adding onto the first floor, a second floor. And that second floor gives me more opportunity to do more things. So when we have our in-person service and we add technology to it, it adds only not because the people who love in-person service are going to be an in-person service, but those who have not been church yet, mm-hmm. they will never die. So here, let me extend this bridge to you to come in. Um, but back to the cost. The cost is always three tiers to me. You have pro level. That's where you're spending money on things like pro presenter. Pro uh-huh. presenter being used by every major church. Every When I say every major, I'm talking, think of churches that have 10,000 members. Yep. And think of that have over 1,000 members. They're using pro presenter to do uh, what they need to do. And they're also getting comparable cameras. Um, the second tier would be the mid tier where you have people that are using things like what we use. Um, You're using iPads and iPhones, which you can still get a very good picture from. Um, You're also using uh, software like Switcher Studio or Slinger Studio, which Mm -hmm. allows to do the same thing. It's just that it's a little harder. It's it's sort of like money, spending money makes things easier. Mm -hmm. You can still get the same thing done, but you have to take more steps. The Pro Presenter, I might take four steps to get a full production done. In a Switcher, I might have to take eight steps to get the production done. And then you have the third tier, which is the beginner tier, uh, where most people are just using whatever camera they can find and software that's free, like uh, OBS Studio. And OBS Studio is great. It's a great open source. Um, and a lot of churches, a lot of Black churches use it because of the cost. It's free. But Whereas I take four steps in Pro Presenter and OBS Studio, I'm taking 18 steps yep. to get this thing done and at a, uh, a lesser quality. Yeah. The cameras will you know, freeze, new software will be updating. It's more of a hassle, but it's enough to get the job done. However, when you look at the production end, you have to remember that man looks on the outward. That's right. God looks the heart. That's so right. when it's and it's sent out to people, if it doesn't look like quality, then they're not going to spend quality time on it. That's Some right. your, friends, your friends might look and share for a few seconds, but other people are going to pass right by it. So even though it's technically can be done by any level, um, when you go out, when we get dressed on Sunday morning, you pick the best suit you got in the closet. You don't just throw anything on. When we go out to sing, we give our best song, the best song that we can sing. When we preach, when we minister, we're doing our best. We don't just give anything. So why in every other area are we giving our best except this one area right here? Yeah, and it, it, you know, it's something that we definitely have to 
um, renew our minds to. It's a new area, a new um, platform. And I like how you stated the tiers, right? Mm -hmm. And how you Mm -hmm. stated that one tier, it may take me 14 steps to do where in another tier, the next level, it may take me four. And that's, that's a point that they miss because they don't think about the people who are doing the work. Bingo. So you, you start at this level and I understand budget and I want, I want to address that even too, when you talk about money, because I understand, I respect budget. You know, I have a house too, you know, you have to make sure you pay in things so that things are getting taken care of. But when the people who are doing the work and you starting at this level and you work in them to do 14, 15 steps and set up and production and trying to, where if you would just invest, keyword that you said, in this platform, it's a more efficient process and it helps. It's kind of like, you know, I don't want to pick cotton. I understand the purpose, but it's labor intensive versus Mm -hmm. where we can get some now technology or machinery that can go out there and run it and do it. And I I don't say that to insult anybody, but that's really how it is when you do it. But then when you look at the people, not only who are doing the work, right, but training (laughs) younger people, right? Because yeah, they may know how to use an iPhone, but they don't know how to use ProPresenter. (laughs) You know, they may not do all that, but so you still have an essence of training that must take place as well. I think the the key to it is I, I show you all the benefits. I try to tell people, here's all the benefits. One, investing in this doesn't mean that you're going to have to invest in it every year. Exactly. You invest in it once and you're let's done. say you put a thousand dollars or whatever. Just, you know, a figure. You spend a thousand dollars and you bought a thousand dollar camera. You don't have to buy another thousand dollar camera next year. That's right. Not unless you're adding to it. But for the most part, if you have spent a thousand dollars or five thousand dollars on a camera, you're not spending that every year. So think about it as if you were buying a thousand dollar camera every year for five years. Yeah, you may not have to upgrade the camera for four or five years or even at all, uh, because software now changes a lot of things. That is but right. also I tell them, look at it from the different. Here's a perspective. Now you are now opening up for your children or whoever. So whoever. We never know who's going to be at church, who's going to leave church, whatever, what God's going to call somebody somewhere else, whatever the case may be. You want to have the process so easy and streamlined that you can go from one person to the next person with a very small learning curve. Also, for the youth, it opens up a whole new world because everybody can't play an instrument. Everybody can't sing. That is right. Speaker. So, but there's some people who are good at technology. And I think our youth, Every church has youth that are on technology every day. They're making videos, they're making uh, uh, little TikToks, they're making all of these things and they're using their camera. So what if we turn them on to now a bigger platform? You never know what could happen. These kids today are writing movies. These kids today are shooting video. And then and outside of that, there's a lot of business opportunities for them. So if they learn graphic arts in the church without having to pay thousands of dollars to learn outside, they can now take their graphic arts and use it as a side hustle. These things also are um, favorable when it comes to college. When you come and say, hey, I'm a graphic artist, or you know, That's I right. am videographer, or That's I'm right. a photographer. I've, I've got four years of photography uh, work in my church it shines great on college applications and internships, but it also opens up their mind to thinking that, hey, I just started doing this stuff at church, but I've learned camera angles and I've learned sound and I've learned how to get the color right. So now it turns them on to say, hey, maybe I can produce a movie or a short story or whatever the case may be. I think it opens up a lot. And I think one of those great uh, illustrations come from our church from, from Amari who went from being the singer and the choir and the deacon right. to getting involved through you with the soundboard and That's that right. took him on a scholarship to college right. where he's That's now right. working on uh, Broadway plays so it's just you know it's you never know where God could take you all we have to do is create the opportunity and let you know the rest take its course but I think the key word is what you said is the opportunity and I think um um, those who don't understand technology, I think you stated earlier, you can't be afraid 
to right. allow those who know and understand it to um, introduce it and, and bring it into the church environment respectfully mm -hmm. so that it's tastefully done. You know, you have those, and, and I, I want to piggyback off what you stated when you talked about the young people, because at our church, I even tried to encourage some of our adults, you know, yes. if you want to learn technology, it's not all, you go to all these other, you know, channel seven news, got a grown person behind the camera, <laughs> you know, you can learn it if you want to learn it. But I think what you stated is we have to set up the opportunity and, and people at the churches, specifically the leadership. And when I say leadership, I'm not just talking pulpit. I'm talking them that sit in the pew as well, have to understand it and allow it to be used. And the key word, and I like that you used it, was it's an investment in your church. It's you, you, you purchase it now and you may not have to touch it as far as purchasing till five, 10 years later, depending on what you purchase and as technology changes. So anybody who's been with technology, we know we don't buy just for today. We buy no. a product that's going okay, this is going to last me at least, technology should always be at least three years. And I tell people, that's how you do your cell phones today. Every three years, you're usually upgrading them because then they start running slow. And like you stated, software does a lot of that. But if you purchase something, you want it to be at least three to five years out where you good. And then you do another forklift. So they have to see it as an investment. Those of you who are watching this, technology is an investment. And I want to emphasize Technology ain't is not going to make the choir sound better. <laughs> it's, it doesn't remove choir rehearsal. It doesn't remove prayer meeting. It doesn't make the sermon more palatable and tasteful. There's still required study and meditation and discipline. It does not negate fellowship. It's just a tool that, I, and you said it earlier, Minister Pipes, outreach, that marquee, every church, Black, white, Hispanic, no matter what denomination you have, they have a marquee, digital or the old, the old school ones where you got to put the letters, is advertising and pushing out what is happening at your church. So now technology takes that and puts it on the World Wide Web, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever it is. It's the same concept, but it's an investment now. And so, yeah, that's... Woo. I can keep let me give you this. this is good dialogue because I'm telling you, people me, don't understand it. Let me give you this one thing. Locally, uh -huh. I am partially responsible for digital pianos. Um, okay. Because when I uh, joined my old church, Mount Zion in Waukegan, mm -hmm. the piano, because of the temperature and the place the piano kept falling out of tune and so um i petitioned them hey get a digital piano and i had a lot of pushback back then but eventually i kind of convinced them of what could happen if you got this digital piano so i had a lot of old people that they didn't want it. i had a lot of young people that didn't they just didn't understand it nobody could see themselves paying five thousand dollars for this piano um so i went in I showed them kind of how it works. They decided to take a chance on it. When they took a chance on the piano and they brought it back, I was able now to show them how I can take the drums and the guitar and the piano and put it all in one place. So when the drummer didn't show up, we didn't miss the drums because the drums were there. When the bass player didn't show up, we didn't miss the bass because the bass player is there. And I'll never forget the Sunday when my pastor, Pastor Gaz, got rested. So stood up and said, I hear all the instruments, but I only see one person. He said, that let me know that I made the right investment. You went from being afraid of this thing to now seeing that it's nothing more than a tool. Now, That's with that it. being said, we had other churches who didn't know what it was now asking me, hey, Reverend, how do we get this in, in my church? How do we get this? How did you do that? And I was able to show some people and tell some people and show them that the technology was there mm -hmm. and if you used it right, it can be a blessing to you. Now, with anything, if you misuse it, it's going right. to be a That is right. But if you use it right, if you use it like it's supposed to be, it's going to be a blessing. And I think even at our own church uh, on Sunday morning, I'm able to run in and put a drum in real quick so that we don't miss a beat. We don't have a drummer. We have drummers and we don't have them. But 
as long as we got that piece of technology, we can have a whole band sitting in front of us. And it doesn't disrupt the service. It doesn't take away from the piano. You still got the piano. That's but right. you're hearing the piano, the organ, the bass, you're hearing the drums, all coming from one piece of technology. So it's the same thing here. You're not taking anything away. That's right. You're adding something to it. And if right. you do it right, it will bless your congregation, your church, and it will bless those who are hearing you from the That's outside. Right. That's right. That's, That's right. One I of those. I remember when uh, you was uh, adding them drums at our church. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I used to tell you, just put it in there. You was like, well, you just put it in there. It'll be fine, dude. Just yeah. put it in there. Oh my word. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this was good. Thank you. This was good. Cause I, I just believe, and I really pray those who watch it, that you get something out of it. You know, less talk is just sharing and helping people. And, and this is an area that a lot of churches, Minister LeVan talked about uh, the black church, but it's not always just the black church because, you know, our people, with all respect, we are, we have resources, we have means, we have finances. You know, when I look at um, just the tennis shoes that we expend on, um, our investment in our cars, um, suits, you know, so we have dollars and we right. know how to bring them together, but it goes back to what you said. The people have to see it as an investment in their church and how it adds to it. And so, um, I, I just pray that something said, especially around this church and technology has helped someone to better understand the, the benefits as minister pipe stated. Um, if you don't do it right, it can be a negative. But when you have the right people over it and you know you have the right people, I mean, I, I'm not just talking about somebody you like, someone who spiritually understands how to do this thing and make sure that it's operating properly and training people. Um, yeah, it, it'll it'll benefit. So thank let, you, let, dude. Let me share this with you. I have yeah. a church that I have been dealing with and they do this production uh, on a year to year basis. And they use a lot of technology in this production. The most important part to me is this. They get to do this Easter production every year, and it's huge. Mm -hmm. And they not only have the people from their church, but they've attracted people from outside of the church to come in to help. Now, what was shocking to me is that some of these people were actually atheists, didn't believe in God, but they came into the church and because they had background in technology to help, all of this stuff was done by volunteers. And the atheists would show up year after year after year, and they would put on these big productions because they went on the road with, you know, some of these bands and stuff yeah. like that. And every single year, the pastor tells me, somebody gets saved. Some atheists give their life to God based off the fact that they were just hanging around the church doing what they were already oh, doing. Just they got opportunities like you said you don't know what is going here's the second thing i say i started this program where i go to churches and sometimes i'll see oh we got four sets of drums this church has none okay so let me take these drums that we got or this church over here has two organs this church has none can we take this organ that you got over here and give it to this other church that has Help none? each other out helps each other out and what I try to do the same thing with technology. Hey, we just upgraded to That's iPad. Right. That's right. And we got these old iPhones and I see you're trying to get production. So it allows us now even the opportunity to help and show right. other people how to use technology to That's get right. them to where they need to go. Also, it allows us to be a blessing to the body of Christ, not just us, but to the entire body of Christ. When we're able to say, hey, we just created our cameras, here's the cameras, Here's some cameras you can use to further your ministry. And then we can send our people over, like I do a lot of time. Just go over and I'll spend hours with you to make sure you get online. Blessed to be a blessing. We miss yes. that. We're blessed. We have more so that we can help somebody else. And that's in all areas. You know, you can't keep asking people to just give, give, give to you. And then you got stuff sitting in the basement. <laughs> here's the beauty here's the beauty of it all 
I've opened up some chains and I'm still working on more chains where I can go to other churches and say, oh, you just upgraded your cameras. Can we have your old ones? Right. It's the same thing. So now they may have upgraded to 2023 cameras and they're getting rid of their 2020, their 2019 cameras. Right, right. Give us your 2019 cameras because it makes us better. And right. then we'll take what we got and give it to the next church. And that way, sometimes you don't have to spend money to yeah. get the same results. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If the chain is open and you get it for free, by all means. But if you have to invest, invest. Yeah. But if you bless somebody else, I believe that God will bless you. Somebody will seek you out and tell you how you, they can be a blessing. Especially, especially when the heart of it is really just trying to help. That's it. You know, when you hold it on to stuff and you got more than enough and you don't want to give mm -hmm. that stuff to somebody, it can be a blessing to. Okay. All right, dude. Good stuff. Because, yeah, we, we have to keep that in mind in every aspect. Not We talk in technology, but it can be in anything. If God has mm -hmm. blessed you with more than enough, you ought to be wanting to share it with somebody else, especially another church or right. sister church, however they say it. Right. So, okay. So let's, let's switch here. Let's, let's, let's switch. Cause th this is a topic that I have talked to you many times before on as well and change the atmosphere is what I call it. Right. But, mm -hmm. and, and the atmosphere, and let me, let me open up with this and I'm gonna let you, the Holy spirit had to reteach me on that because I always heard growing up, right. People ought not have to pump and prime you for, for worship and, and get you riled up for worship. And that is true when applied to the right people who mm -hmm. know God has been good to right, you. Right, 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 that right. is very true. But that application is not um, all encompassed for everybody. And right. so the Holy Spirit had to reteach me because people, and I don't say this disrespectfully, but people I even know, you know, that struggling with divorce, mm -hmm. mental problems, abuse, you know, mm -hmm. folks coming from work, somebody trying to get, struggling with a, some child, with something that's going on, substance abuse, and they trying to press their way to the house of the Lord for, like we said, technology don't take away that experience of the fellowship, right? And so the Holy Spirit had to really teach me on this because we have to, change the atmosphere and when i say change man i don't know how you're gonna have to help me i'm because you know somebody gonna watch this and they're gonna be like oh Tawanda, you know <laughs> but the change the atmosphere is what i'm saying is make an atmosphere conducive to worship and praise so when people come in they know not only are they in a house of worship in god's house but they can experience the praise watch this for inspiration encouragement mm -hmm uplifting right to to right. to just help strengthen them because people all of us me you we all have something that's weighing on our mind you know a lot right. of us and look minister pipes you know as well as me and there's many others across the nation you're always the the one who's giving the ministry right. on sunday right the one who's who doing it but people don't realize even you get depleted even yes. you got family issues, even you got yes. some health stuff, even you got some things that just, and so, but you have this gift and I, I'm gonna let you speak on it because I've said it to you many times and anybody who has, um, um, I don't know if experience is the right word, but experience minister pipes when just mm -hmm. from a singing perspective, when he comes in and I, he preaches the gospel, you go out to our page and see him powerful and, and, and very good. But singing wise, and I piggyback this off of, I think it's Second Chronicles chapter um, 20, right around that 19th verse. If you go and read it, you'll see how they were going into battle and Jehoshaphat sent the choir out front mm -hmm. and told them to sing praises. And, and we know that scripture, right? God inhabits the praises of his people. So, right. you know, and, and you have that gift. I, I just want, I want to say that on YouTube public wide. <laughs> That's not to say don't nobody else have it, but Minister mm -hmm. Pipes has that gift from a singing perspective where the atmosphere changes, where you can't sit with your arms folded. <laughs> You've got to um, participate. And so right. I just, when you hear that, you know, let's, let's talk just a brief moment on, 
I called it change the atmosphere, but just the atmosphere of worship and praise so that those unsaved and even those that are saved come in. How, how do you encourage not just yourself, right? Give me your, how you encourage yourself, but how you, how we encourage others that are those vessels that God flow in and through. Um, I start by reminding myself, what you here for? Did you get dressed this morning, come to church, you take a shower, do all these things to come to church and be quiet. And what makes you think you can sit in church this time and be quiet and come back next week and be noisy. God ain't promised you next week. All right. So it could be your very last time That's right. in the house of God giving him worship. And here's the thing. You made it in here all right, but you don't know if you're going to make it out. That's right. <laughs> How do you want that one. To record this? How do you want, because I've been in churches where people, you know, we hear about shootings and stuff in church all the time, mm -hmm. but I've been in church where people naturally died in church. You know, it passed out and didn't wake up. Mm -hmm. um, so in my head, I think to myself, you made it to the house of God. You're here. You're not promised to come back again next week. And God has uh, tasked you with, and everybody in here, with one thing, to worship him. If you leave here today with that undone, you have failed in your duties and responsibilities. But it's also... The simple thought in my I know we hear it a lot. Mm -hmm. Thought is this. You laid down last night and you went to sleep. You were unconscious to the entire world. There was no promise that you would wake up in the morning, but you woke up one more time. So doesn't God deserve your praise? Doesn't he deserve you opening your mouth and blessing? So to me, I call it. Like the song we sing, praise him, everybody praise him with a loud voice, change the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I look at it as being spiritual warfare because people, like you said, they're going through divorce, they're going through sicknesses. Some people just got diagnosed with cancer. Some people just got a diagnosis for their family member. And their spirit is weighed down. And when like my mother had been diagnosed with cancer, my spirit was weighed down, but I had to stop and realize that God is good all the time. Mm -hmm. even when it doesn't look good even when it doesn't feel good that's right. even when it doesn't sound good that's and right. so if he did all the time then I have to be at my best when I praise him so I try to pull people into praise with me I try to pull them into to worship with me I try to pull them in because what I understand is this worship is warfare worship is the enemy wants you to keep your mouth shut but God wants you to praise him so you're literally at war between Satan and God right now. And he's trying to make you keep your mouth shut so you won't give God praise. And God is telling you to open your mouth, cry loud and spare not. Here is the other thing that I learned. Um, when you open your mouth, I got this from Psalms. I was studying Psalms one day when it said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And I begin to study it. It says, when you make a sound, sound cuts through the air. Whatever sound you make, when you open your mouth, sound cuts through, you, through the air. And the louder your sound, the bigger the gap that it cuts through the air. Uh -huh. So if Satan is the prince of the power of the air, and your praise can cut through the air, Come on, dude. then your praise Come now on. breaks his stronghold that Come he on. has with you and all the Come other on. people. Simply because you open your mouth and bless God. And the longer and the louder you bless him, the weaker and the wider that that gap gets. So therefore, when I come into church, I ain't coming just to sing. I'm coming for war. Let's 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 fight the devil. And what I love is that when when it finally breaks the atmosphere, you see people get free. You see yeah. people yeah. sitting there quiet. You see people yeah. that were there that was with tears in their eyes, opening their mouth yeah. and praising God. And I say, my God, thank you for using me as a vessel this time. I ain't always have it. Yeah, I don't always feel like it. Yeah. But while I have the chance, I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to scream until I get hoarse <laughs> because that's what you called me to do. <laughs> and I don't care who don't like it. <laughs> that's just the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you, dude. That, that's good stuff. You tap in every every time you come into the house of worship, into what um, 
what God has already done. And, and I, and I wanted to discuss this because it is, um, it's many, and, and I, I don't want to say it's many like them. Many times it's even in me, with mm-hmm. me about, you know, that you just, you weigh down with whatever it is. Cause everybody's situation is different. Right. And you can't say, mm-hmm. Oh, that don't mean nothing. Now your stump toe may not mean nothing, but for me, it for means me. something, right? <laughs> it means something. But 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 the key is is that we have to we have to tap in. But I think it's crucial today, especially when we think about technology and how worship service is now on on what I call the WWW, right? The World Wide Web, right? And but to tap in, but so that people know that this worship and this praise is not just loud noise but i like mm-hmm. how you categorize it it's warfare it's yes. a it's a it's a i was i was reading second chronicles like i said chapter uh i want to say 20 right around that 19th verse and how the choir the levites and jehoshaphat he put mm-hmm. them out front and told them and they bowed down and they worshiped and the next morning they got up and he put them out front and he told them praise god with a loud voice yes. Yes. My God in heaven. And when you think about that scripture, that he inhabits the praise of his people, it's just like, that means he comes in, in the mist. Bingo. <laughs> so, yes. so, okay. So. It's literally. Oh, it's really that simple, right? <laughs> it's really. So when you got the, the almighty, all knowing, all powerful in your midst. Boy. It is God come here, help. That's your SOS signal. You're saying to God, okay, this is too much for me to, it is literally if you were being jumped by a bunch of people. Said SOS symbol, y'all. Do you hear me? You screamed out help and your help can't come in. This, if he inhabits the praises of your people, when we start doing this, oh my God, when we start praising God, we're saying help and watch this. He leaves where he's at which he's everywhere at the same time. Yeah. But yeah. he right in with us. Yeah. We from the Hebrew boys where the fourth one in the fire looks like the man. <laughs> Hold on. I thought I was in this by myself, but then I begin to praise God. And you ever been like that? Oh my God. Man. Been- and, and you get you gain you gain strength. You gain yeah. that encouragement. You gain that inspiration that I can you know, I I can I can keep going. <laughs> I can, I feel them. I hold feel on, like, I don't know how long. Falling apart around me, I'm just like, man, you know. And you sitting there crying, and you depressed, and you begin to worship God and praise God, and, and before you know it, you start to feel better. After a yeah. while, you, that that ain't your own strength. You're still in the same situation. Yeah. yeah. God stepping in yeah. and taking. Care. I'm like, my God, if we could ever get past the point of thinking that. Um, our praise is just a song or our praise is just, you know, uh, something that we do and start realizing what your praise actually is. It, it's warfare. It's SOS to God. And it's also begging God or telling God, come help me. I don't feel like it. Some days I don't feel like coming to church. Some days I don't feel like worshiping. Some days I don't feel like singing. Some days I just don't feel like it. But then I stop and realize something. Something my grandmama told me a long time ago. She said, son, you don't always do it for you. That's but there's right. somebody else that That's you need right. to get to. You're so right don't think thinking that. selfishly about yourself. So yeah, you might be having problems. You might have situations. But they got situations too. And God has anointed you to get them out of that situation. That's right. So you don't praise and you don't worship. Because God not just come and get in your situation. He come and get everybody that's in you that sound situations right, right. When you don't when you don't praise you're now keeping them locked up yes ma'am <laughs> she said you ain't gotta like the song you ain't gotta like the people you ain't gotta that's like right. none of that that's right but that's what you were called to do you were called to give your all no matter what it is because right. god looked at you she said there are many people around the world that wish they had the gift that you have that's right no matter you're right. Yeah, so look at you and wish they could sing half as good as you can sing. Yeah. So your gift back to God is simply giving him the best every time you give it. That's right. That's right. I love it. And she changed That's my right. life. 
That is right. That is right. And, and, and I, you know, we talk about praise, right? Magnifying and lifting God up, but we cannot neglect. And I, I don't think we, we teach it or um, expound upon it enough. The worship, yes. the worship, you know, when you, when you look at just who God is, the holiness, right? The sovereign, right. You know, and then how you have access to that. Bingo, bingo. <laughs> you know, you, you have to worship as well. And so we, I don't think we teach it enough because um, a lot of our songs is always centered around, you know, the praise part of it. You know, we right. don't, we don't, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Our, a lot of our songs is just around that praise part and that has its place. Don't get me wrong, but we don't sing songs that um, make us meditate on just who God is. You know, we, there's a song that we sing um, that's coming to mind. Magnify your name. We magnify your name. Um, glorify your name. We glorify your name. Just in, in that sense, that's a worship. And, I, and, and I've always used that when you get in the throne room and, and that's, when you talked about tapping into the praise and from a, for me, from a directing standpoint, it's, it's when my mind shifts and I get, I'm in the throne room, like in his presence, you can't yes. help, but to just, you know, I mean, a simple song like hallelujah, salvation and glory, and then oh, yeah. put your mind in the throne room with angels and all. I think the most important thing Oh, you made me happy now. <laughs> Telling you. The most important thing is that time you spend with God and worship by yourself. Yeah. So I'll spend time away from my family, from away from everybody, and just worship with God because I have to get to the throne room first. So sometimes I'll be in the parking lot of church, getting ready to go in, and I'm I'm getting my spirit right. I'm worshiping. Yeah in my car because I can't take you to a place that I've never been. That's right. That's right. That's right. I haven't been to the throne room. I can't take you to the throne room. That's right. I got to get to the throne room, come back, pick you up and take you to the throne room with me. Yeah. So when I get to church, I can't bring you to the throne room. Then, you know, if I haven't been myself, let, right. I got to get there first privately. Now I can show you the way I can be your GPS. Come on, let yeah. me pull you to this place. Yeah. We can sing about uh, when songs like, uh, oh, Lord, my God, when I'm in awesome wonder, you should think about songs like that. It changes the way you think about it. It becomes more than just a cute melody. It becomes like, wait a minute. Right. Right. I'm in awesome wonder. Like, oh, I consider the earth, the everything. Right. What, am, what is man that you mindful of me? Yeah. And then yeah. You, you, you woke me up. There was a baby who was innocent of any sin. That died from sins last night. Yeah. But with all of my junk, all of my sins, and the sins that you see, I'm still gonna commit. You woke me up and gave me another chance. Let me pause right now and just tell you thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let yeah. Me and that's just where your mind, when we talk about this change the atmosphere, you know, we also have to change the in the inner man's atmosphere. So what I tell a lot of people coming to church is just not. Okay, I'm gonna wake up and I'm getting dressed so I can get to the church. It's that um, we said it earlier that pre screening, that pre preparation at home that gets you, you know, I don't, I don't, if you need to watch somebody on the WWW or if you need to uh, <laughs> get, get your, your praise on with whatever radio station that you need to get, but it's that preparation that has to take place. I, you know, you know who come into my head? Um, uh, Deacon Shawell, you know, oh, before he would pray, he would close. <laughs> I can't even say it, but Deacon yeah. Shawell, he would just before he even pray, right? Just and he, yes, yes, yes. he get his preparing oh, himself oh, to go, you know, just cleaning the temple, <laughs> getting me ready. So, because I'm just to walk in this throne room to talk to Father, and I just pause don't just walk in like hey you know just man and that's that's what i'm 
that's what I'm hearing as far as this change the atmosphere. You have to pause your own inner man. And because I've, I've experienced, and I'm sure those who watching, you can do the pre screening, you can do all the preparation, get yourself ready, and Satan will meet you at the church door. <laughs> So th this is this is the beauty. That could try to mess you up really quick if you ain't ready. I take the Bible seriously. So when he says enter his gates with thanksgiving. Uh-huh. Oh, I think we lost him. When I'm on the in parking lot, enter the park. You got me? Yeah, we got you. When I'm entering the parking lot, right? I'm thankful. I start to get my mind right. Yeah. I enter his course by the time I, I, I get to, I literally do this every Sunday, every time, every rehearsal. When I enter into the, the, the vestibule, that's the courts. I'm entering his course. I'm praising him. And then I'm being thankful mm -hmm. because here it is. Um, like you said, in order to shift the atmosphere, I have to first shift my attitude. Yep, I got problems, I got situations, That's I got right. money issues. I got I just had a little spat with my wife. I just found out my little cousin got into trouble, whatever the case may be. Yeah. But when I enter God's house, all that stuff get left behind. I can pick it up as soon as I leave. Sometimes when you get to church, you get met at the door. Somebody That's might dope. say something, somebody might do something, you know. That's right. It, it has the potential to throw you off, but then I have to remind myself of why I'm here. I ain't here for him. I ain't sure. here for her. I ain't here for none of that. Yep. My problems are going to be my problems when I leave this place. So while I'm here, while I'm here, I, I like to think of it like people, analogy. People can have all the problems in the world. They go to the club and they dance the night away. And they forget all about them problems. You're right. And then they go home back to them problems. You're right. Why can't we do the same thing? We seem to bring our problems into church with us instead of leaving the problems at the door. And while I'm here, I'm going to worship God. I'm going to praise God. I'm going that's a good point. That's a good, that's a good analogy. That's a good back. analogy. So if we can do that for the world, why can't we do that for church? But instead we bring our stuff into church with us. No, no, this is not the this is not the time nor the place. This is about God. It's not about me. It's not about what happened Friday. It's about what's happening right now. God is good. He gave you air in your lungs. He blessed you right now. He's worthy of the praise. So while I'm here, I'm not going to be at his house, at his party with my own stuff. All right. All right, dude. Party at home. Right now, I'm going to worship him. Because the truth yeah. of the matter, man, I've looked down in faces of... I just did a funeral of a guy who died from an asthma attack. And he was like 23. Wow. You wow. know what I'm saying? Come on, we're not promised none of this. That's right. That's right. That is right. That is right. Well, this has been good, dude. I thank you for spending some time with me on Absolutely. Let's Talk. This has really been good. I pray that those who do watch it and listen, that you got something out of it to encourage you, help you mm -hmm. understand, and just give you a different viewpoint, a positive viewpoint on how to do some things as far as church and technology, but as well as changing the atmosphere. So now, you know, we got to close out this little chat that we went <laughs> here. So, you know, I can't talk about change the atmosphere and you don't say nothing. So uh, I'm putting, don't be hugging me. I'm putting you on the spot. So I need you to do, uh, <clears throat> I need you to do something for me. A little something, you know, just a little something. Do, do give me some, um, Lord, do it. Can you do that? Just, you know. You read the Bible. You read the story about the man who's blind and he cannot see. But one day he heard that Jesus was passing by and he said, Lord, will you lay your hands, lay your hands, lay your hands on me. He didn't really stop there. He said, Lord, do it, do it, do it, Lord, do it. The young man said, Lord, will you do it for me? Lord, do it for me. He cried out, Lord, will you do it, do it, do it, Lord, do it. He cried with his hands up and he said, 
Will you do it for me? Yeah. Do it for me. Yeah, right. Now. Now. Right now. I can't wait another minute. Can't wait another second. Do it for me. Do it for me. Right. Now. I, can't I can't hold on much longer. Said, will you do it for me? Do it for me. Right. Now, all right, dude. All right, all right. Now, <laughs> looking at me like I'm crazy, but hey, you all right? You know, somebody needed that. Somebody needed that. That Lord do it for me they right now. For my, all the time, I be in there just yelling and praising God. And That's just, what it's I'm about, like, dude. Hey, what you got going God. on? What you? We got to close out. What you got coming up? Coming up. Um, Coming up, um, I have a few preachers' engagements coming up next week. Uh, I'll be at New Hope on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Uh, Sunday, I'll be at uh, celebrating with um, Antioch Baptist Church. Not this Sunday, but next Sunday, the 25th. Okay. I'll be with them uh, doing their church's anniversary, I believe, or the pastor's anniversary. I don't remember which one it was. I'll be at... Uh, the bridge doing praise and worship from the 25th to the through the 28th. That's on right off 21st Street in Zion, Illinois. On the 27th, uh, okay, Tuesday, I'll be delivering a much over of our and uh, yeah, that's pretty much what we got going on besides okay. uh, other so small you broke things. Broke up uh, a little bit there, so we got the 25th right at Antioch mm -hmm. and Waukegan. That's Pastor Conley, right? Pastor Conley. Okay, and then we have the Bridge, which is a church in Zion, right off Twenty First Street, right. Yep. And you are there on the twenty seventh, doing Deliberate. a youth conference. Yes. yes okay. What time? Uh, uh, Six p.m. If you can make it out, there's the twenty fifth through the twenty eighth, so you can make it out any one of those nights. Um, okay. So you know, let's go out and see if we can help our youth be encouraged absolutely absolutely thank you dude love you much you. appreciate love the time too, we'll do this again another topic and uh i yeah thank you thank you thank you you have a good one all right we'll talk soon all right, you too. bye <laughs>